Welcome to Electron Line, and here we have another example of how to use Markov chains to find out what the final state will be. In this example here, we have two stores, A and B, and so we see that 30% of the customers currently shopping at A will switch to B every month, and 20% of the customers shopping at B will switch back to A every month. And so then the question is, what is the final stable distribution matrix? And so this is how we denote it in terms of Markov chains. What is the stable distribution matrix? So in order to do that, in order to figure that out, we first need to find out what the probability matrix is. P is equal to, and so here we have the from row, so from A and B, and here we have the two row, which is A and B. So from A to A, from B to A, from A to B, and from B to A, uh, from B to B. So what do we know? So from A, because 30% of the customers shopping at A will switch to B. So from A to B, which is this point right here. So this goes right to this part of the matrix. So that would be 0 0.3 because 30% of the customers currently going to A will be going to B, from A to B. Now on the second sentence here, we have 20% of the customers shop at B and they will switch to A every month. So of the customer shopping at B, right here, they will go back to A and it's a 20% change, so that's 0 0.2, and that comes from this sentence right here. All right, now the other two uh, states, or the other two uh, elements here will be put in by knowing that when we sum them together vertically, it should add up to one, which means this needs to be at 0 0.7, and this needs to be at 0 0.8. What that means is of all the people shopping at A, 70% will remain at A, and for all the people shopping at B, 80% will stay at B. And so if this is a situation, how many customers will A end up with and how many customers will B end up with? Well, that's what we're trying to find because that will be the stable uh, matrix or the stable distribution matrix that we're looking for. Okay, in order to do that, we know that P times the stable matrix equals, or the stable distribution matrix equals the stable distribution matrix. And we're going to let that matrix equal to A and B. What we're doing is we're finding the final values for the states A and B or the final states A and B. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to multiply this matrix, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.8. And we're going to multiply that times the final states of A and B. And when we do that, we should get the final states of A and B. And all we have to do now is find out what those final states are. So we're going to multiply this row times this column to get equal to A, so 0.7A, that's this times this, plus 0.2 times B equals A, and then again this times this, so 0.3 times A, plus 0.8 times B equals B. And of course you also know that A plus B always have to equal 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take one of these two equations, and we're going to solve it for one of the variables in terms of the other. We're going to move the 0.7a to the right side, so end up with 0.2b is equal to a minus 0.7a, or 0.2b equals 0.3a. And if we multiply both sides by 10, we get 2b equals 3a, or b is equal to 3 divided by 2a, 3 over 2a. All right, so now that we have b in terms of a, we can then plug that into this equation right here to solve for A. When we do that, we get A plus 3 divided by 2A is equal to 1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move that over to this side because that way I have a little bit more room to work with. We're now going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. If I do that, I end up with 2A plus 3A equals 2. So what I did here is I multiplied both sides by 2. So we got 2a, the 2 is here cancel out, plus 3a equals 2. Combine the a's together, we get 5a equals 2, or a is equal to 2 divided by 5. So now I know my final state for a, for store a, and this is of course a plus b equals 1. So I can get a plus b equals 1. And so since a is 2 fifths, or b is equal to 1 minus a, so b is equal to 1 minus 2 fifths, and that would therefore mean that B is equal to 3 fifths. So there's the two final states for A and B. That means that this is equal to 2 fifths and 3 fifths. 
And to quickly check to see if that makes sense, yes, because only 70% of the customers at A remain at A, 80% of the customers at B remain at B. There's more customers remaining at B than at A, so you expect a larger percentage of the customers eventually shopping at B versus A. And so that looks like a reasonable stabilization or stable distribution matrix. So what we can say is that this is equal to 0.4 and 0.6, which means that at the end, 40% of all the people will on average shop at A, and 60% of all the people will end up shopping at B. Of course, if you're the manager at store A, you're going to try to find some way to keep more of your customers at A and having less of customers going from A to B. You want this to be a smaller number and that to be a bigger number. And if you're the manager at store B, you want to make this even a bigger number and make that a smaller number. And that's what you're always trying to do. And so at this case, if this is what's going on, that will be the eventuality that 60% of all shoppers will go to B and only 40% of the shoppers will go to A. And this is how we use Marcos chains to figure that out.